Hey, Dave Oslin here with Cabrillo Welding. For those new students that want to learn how to, to uh, complete your 1G stick welding test successfully, I want to go over for, with a few tips that I have for myself and my own students. So Let's talk about setting these plates up. So this is what we're shooting for for the final product. It's got a quarter inch gap in here. Every place that I'm gonna weld, I've cleaned this metal up. So let's let's look at this procedure here. So here's a 3 8 by three inch plate with a 22 and a half degree bevel. I've got two of these. And then I've got a one inch wide backing strap. So I wanna clean these plates up here. Every place that's gonna receive a weld, it's gotta be cleaned up. A little grinding wheel. I'll clean the back up. I want to be very careful on this back that I actually don't bevel. I want to keep this clean up job dead flat. And I'm going to put a slight lane on this. Now clean it up, clean, clean up slight land. If it's not immaculate, it's fine. We're stick welding. That stick welding is going to burn right through this. Now the backup bar, just need to clean up one side of it. Everything cleaned, ready to tack together. Okay, now placing these upside down on a clean, flat surface. I want a quarter inch gap. I've got a piece of quarter inch flat bar. I'm going to clamp one of these down. Kind of make sure it doesn't try to run off on me or wiggle around. I'll line these up. Quarter inch gap. Going to center this backup bar right over the middle. About a half inch minimum hanging over both sides. Bingo, it's ready to weld. Put a, put a, a one inch weld, no longer than one inch, on each corner of this. If I run these out in here, I'm getting into my coupon area. So I'm going to keep those welds just on the outside. I'm gonna do a little stitch weave. Because I have a MIG gun sitting right here, I'm gonna use that. You're welcome to use your stick setup too. Again, I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna do a little weave here. Stitch those together, watch your eyes. Four, bingo, bingo. All done. Let's take a quick look see at this. Again, 
welds no longer than an inch. I stitched these together. Now I've got a nice, what we call a 45 degree included angle with a quarter inch root opening. I'm ready to weld this. But I'm using a 7018 electrode eighth inch. I'm gonna run it about 135 amps. These 7018s are low hydrogen rods. They produce X-ray quality welds in the hands of a decent welder. So I'm gonna fire up out here on this runoff tab. And I'm just, once I get in here, I'm just gonna lightly zigzag back and forth, tying into both edges. Every time I move, I'm just coming about an eighth inch forward. The biggest problem we learning students have is we travel too fast, we long arc, and we have wonky angles. So we want to start out at about a five to 15 degree drag angle. Remember, if it's got slag, you drag. Just take your time. Remember, you're, you're on, a, on a slow drive through a park. There's no winners trying to get to the end first. So I'm going to keep that nice and close, nice and slow. I'm not using the angle like this where this side's getting all the lovins and this side's getting starved. I want to come straight down the middle at that light, slight drag angle. So I'm here. I'm going to do that all the way through till I run off my tab and come all the way out to the end of my tab there. So that's what we're going to do, about 135 amps DC positive. Okay, I'm going to light up out here and I'm going to burn through here. Nice and close, nice and slow. Notice I'm rocking up on hitting both walls here. I'm keeping this thing nice and close. Again, we generally tend to go too fast. Um, speed is out, angles travel gets wonky and we start long arcing. The 78 teams like to run nice and close and tight. Okay, I ran out of rod, so what do I do? Do I restart here? If you're good on restarts, yes. Otherwise, I'm gonna spin this bad boy around and I'm gonna start from the other end and burn into my weld. Let's see what happens. Here we go, watch your eyes. Start on my other end, I'm approaching my stop here. I started to stop. I'm going to burn into the crater a little bit. Just finished my first pass, that root pass. I'm going to clean this up, wire brush it, and we're going to take a look at it. Here we go. Okay, I'm ready for my hot pass, my second pass after that root. Same thing, I'm going to do a little weave and I'm going to start here again, nice and close, slight drag angle, and I'm going to tie into each one of those sides. Pausing at my edges for a second or two. Pause, 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 pause. I'm going to weld back. Now that was that reed, that's where I did that tie in. So I'm starting on this end, I'm going to weld over that. I'll probably end up about here and I'll have to start and come back and tie into that. That's what, let's see what happens. So I'm pausing at the outside of my toes there. Let those things burn into the sides there. If I don't pause, I'm going to get some underfill or undercut at the sides of those. I don't want that to happen. Nice and close, nice and slow. A little pause here and there. Okay, just finished with my hot pass. I'm gonna clean it up. Get a wire brush in. Got a 
let's look. So there's my there's my tie-in. Now you know, I don't know if you can see that, but this side's a little lower than this side. I, what happened? I, my angle changed as I was coming through there. So trying to keep that angle 90 degrees to the plates and yet a bat drag, that's what I'm shooting for. There's my little tie in there. So I've just got to watch myself, you know, every weld has its issues. Every time in a perfect world, every pass would be great, but such it is. Okay, I'm ready for some, some fill passes. Now on this one, I'm not going to weave so much. I'm going to do a very small weave. I'm gonna come in at this, rather than straight in like this, I'm gonna come tilt it. I'm gonna come from about the center and just barely climb that, climb those walls. What I really want to avoid is cutting off this sharp shoulder here. That's like a line on a road at night, helping you find out where you're going. Once in a while, people will get too full and they'll take a little wire wheel, excuse me, an angle grinder with a cutting wheel and they'll make a couple little wagon tracks here to follow. But if you can avoid burning this edge off, you've got a straight line to, to finish that off. So here I am, my next pass through there. Notice I'm just going halfway out, and just going in that very slight weave. My speed of travel has speeded up a little bit. I'm not going wide. To be able to get all the way through on one rod here. Notice I, I didn't even use a full rod that time. I was running in narrower bead. And if I did it right, Notice how this flag comes off a lot easier now. Hit it with a wire brush and look at it. Okay, I was lucky. So you can notice I got about a 16th to a 32nd of an inch from the top edge that I'm trying to leave that nice shoulder for a nice crisp line to follow when I do my fill pass. Okay, I'm ready to do the other side. Same thing, I'm gonna come in at this angle. Weld through. Here we go, another fill pass. Slightly overlap the middle of this. Okay, if you look, I filled, I used a little bit more rod on this time. I notice where I'm, I'm a little shallow, I have to slow down and fill those areas up. You also notice that as this comes up out of there and the walls aren't captivating that slag, it comes off a lot easier. When 7018s run correctly, it's a thing of beauty. It cleans up good. Sometimes it'll even what we call scorpion tail walk right off that. Or curl up and walk right off that stuff. So let's hit it with a brush again. Watch your eyes. You notice again, I'm trying to keep this one edge here. I burn it off just a teeny bit there. No big deal. So now I'm ready just to, my next passes are actually gonna fill up over the edges. I need to do a, a fat stringer down the middle. When I say stringer, I just mean just a straight shot. A light up here, do a nice slow stringer. I like to fill my lowest spots up first. That'll set me up for doing a one, two, three stringer cap on this bad boy. Here we go. I'll come right up the middle. I'm just going to lay a stringer right down the middle. Got 
down a lot faster. I'll probably barely use a half a rod here. And I've done it when I'm back into my crater. Okay, we're getting there. Let's let's clean this up, take a look at it. When a 7018 is run correctly, it's a thing of beauty. Okay, now I've just about filled up. Now I'm ready to do one, two caps, maybe three. So we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes. Maybe. When it kind of goes slow, I want to watch it. Turn right up over the edge. Right up over those shoulders. Right angle, favoring that shoulder there. Okay, let's see where we did on this pass. So, you notice this slag starting to crawl off that scorpion tail there. Pink. So easy that cleans up. Let's take a look see at this bad boy. Okay, I was able to come up, just flow over those shoulders, tied into the joint plate. That cover, that cover pass is done. I'm gonna spin it around and do the same thing on the other side. Looks like maybe two, two beads and I've capped this puppy off. Okay, now a little moment of confession here, just to speed things up for filming. I've actually quenched this plate briefly between passes. Normally you wanna just let it kind of cool down, put your air scupper over it, let it dry, excuse me, let it cool for a, a few minutes just for lower that inner pass temperature. But I just did a quick clip, which you generally never wanna do. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see how this cover pass goes. It looks a little heavy, but might be all right. So that last pass, I laid it in heavy. I wanted to make sure I'm a, I'm a little heavy there. As long as I'm not an eighth inch more than more than this uh, rod, I'm all right. See, I'm a little heavy, and if Inspector was on a bad day, he might he might nick me on that one. But otherwise, I've come in here, all my corners are tied in there. I could have done two quick little stringers. That might have been advantageous to me. But either way, for, for um, a 1G test plate, this is gonna be totally strong. So remember, I'm cutting my, my two coupons here and here. We, we cut the back. I have a video. I'll try to put a link on there on how I remove this backup bar. I do it with oxyacetylene with a scarfing tip. Uh, minimum of grinding on the back, grind it on the front, cut your two test plates, and bend them.